Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 19 of Introductory Python for Image Processing tutorial series. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna talk about for loops. In the previous tutorial, we covered while loops. While loops, loops through a piece of code while certain condition holds true. Now for loops are going to loop through typically a bunch of uh, numbers or values in a list, okay? Uh, so for loops, in a way, you can think of this as for each item in a list or in a string, do certain computation. It makes more clear once we jump into Spider and write a few lines of code. Now, here is the code left over from our previous tutorial where we have used while loop to actually convert centigrade or Celsius into Fahrenheit using our conversion equation. And by incrementing the centigrade, uh, five by five degrees or Celsius by five degrees every time it loops through. So we printed this. So now let's actually uh, look at for loops. So let me clear my variables and let me clear my screen so we can focus more on the for loops. Now, uh, typically for loops are applied on lists or strings. So let's actually define a list and how do we define this again we covered this in one of our previous tutorials let's just say one two three four five let's do something to this uh, uh, each of this uh, each of this value let's go ahead and print each of this value how do we do that uh, printing each of these so let's actually say fur okay and I'm going to define a variable called I in a okay again a colon so all this is saying is for i in a basically means the first time it looks at a, my i is a value one. The next time i is value two, three, four, and five, and so on, okay? Now we can also do uh, b equals to, we can just do another list called uh, a, b, c, okay? And let's just leave it there. So let's try both examples. So in A means it's actually looking at one, two, three, four, five, right? So let's go ahead and do print the current value is, okay? Uh, let's put a space and let's print I, right? We are not printing A. So when I run this code, you should see that the current value is one, two, three, four, five. So this is a way of seeing exactly what it's doing as it's going through this list. So initially, uh, it's printing one, two, three, four. So now if I change this for I in B, the current value is A, B, C. Okay, so let's go back to A. Now it doesn't have to be I, I just used, it's anything for, I don't know, uh, for uh, let's just say Apple in A, just print Apple. It's just a variable, it doesn't matter. Okay, it still says current value is one, two, three. It can be for X in A. It's customary to use I, so I just put I here, okay? So for I in A. Now, later on, if you want to do something to each pixel in your image, you can just say for pixel in image, okay, where your image is a collection of pixels, uh, do something, okay? Apply something. So that's, uh, that's when it makes sense to give proper names to this. So. I hope that makes sense. Uh, now it not only loops through lists, but also for strings. So for example, if I say, uh, or uh, uh, let's actually say uh, for X in, let's actually define a uh, text, a string. Let's call this microscope, okay? For X in microscope, let's just print X. Print, uh, let's say X. Okay, so if we run this code, it should print M-I-C-R-O-S-O-P-E, uh, right? So first X is M, the next round X is I, and so on. So anyway, for loops, loops through each item, each entry in a list or in a string. Okay, so that is, uh, and just like uh, while loops, you can actually put, uh, for example, break. So I have written, pre-written like a few lines of code to explain this break. So, oops, sorry, uh, let's go ahead and copy it 
and uh, I'm going to paste it here so we can skip this typing part. Uh, so for uh, X in microscope, oh, in fact, let's actually print, uh, I forgot to, okay, there you go. So let's define our microscopes instead of just as microscope text. I'm going to print, uh, define a list right now. My microscopes that I have are confocal white field and fluorescence, for example. So for X in microscopes, print X, okay? If I don't have this part, for example, let me go ahead and comment these, then it's going to print confocal wild field and fluorescence, okay? But if X equals to wild field, break. Again, just like while loop, it should break right there. So it says confocal and white field, that's it. No fluorescence, okay? It's going to break. Uh, similarly, continue uh, can also be used just like I explained in while loop. Now, uh, one of the other, uh, let's, let's actually use the range function to actually define. So range is it creates a range of uh, numbers, let's say starting from zero, unless you specify. So let me just go ahead and uh, use one example that we copied that I uh, pr have pre-written here. So let's go ahead and paste it. Okay, so for I in range 10, again, let's focus on the right-hand side. If I do print range of 10, okay? Sorry, I need to close it. So it says range zero to 10, right? So let's actually do for i in range 10, print i. So this is values from zero to 10 at an increment of one because I haven't specified anything. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so you can see zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way nine. So range, it's doing whatever within that range. Now you can print a range between 20 to 60 in steps of two. This is how you do it, <coughs> excuse me. Now you can see it's printing 20, 22, 24. So if you don't specify anything, if you just provide one number inside range, that means go from zero to that number in steps of one. If you specify this, now it's actually stepping through this. So how can we use this efficiently? Now let's say for number, for num in range zero to 20, that means zero, one, two, three, four, all the way to 19. If number, when divis divided by two, remains equals to zero, you know what this means, right? So uh, what that means is, I covered this in my third or fourth tutorial. So let's say five percentage two should be one. Six percentage two should be zero. So the percentage sign just gives you a reminder. So in other words, what I'm saying is, if the number divided by two gives a reminder of zero. What does that mean? If the number is even, then print that this is an even number. If not, print that this is an odd number. Now, I'm confusing you now by introducing another percentage right here. It's very important to understand. So this is, an, uh, this is a mathematical operator percentage right there when you are using this type of uh, operators out, out here and uh, i hate that uh, in python again that given that there are only a handful of these uh, type of symbols that you can use they use the same percentage as a placeholder in your print statement so when you're actually printing something on the screen when you say percent d that means uh, d is the data type Okay, so percent is the uh, 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 placeholder and you're defining what this percent D is up here, percent number. So let me go ahead and run this so you can see what we mean. Okay, so it's actually printing zero is an even number because that is divisible. When you divide that by two, you get a value of zero. So it's going to say whatever percent D is an even number. You see how it replaced this percent D with zero? You see how it replaced this percent D down here? with one, okay? In fact, if I change this percent D to percent F, okay, let's go ahead and run it. Now it it's printing it as uh, uh, a floating point number, okay? So that's all it is. So this is the format. D is an integer right there, okay? F is floating. So when I print this again, so now it's printing zero is even, one is odd, two is even, four, a three is odd, and so on. Again, let me uh, stress on this one more time. 
inside a print statement when you put quotations because anything inside the quotations is text that you want to print as is right but sometimes we would like to say certain number is even certain number is odd how do you define that certain number from inside of this uh, quotations this is where we can use this percentage placeholder so the percentage d means i'm going to define what that percentage d is in a minute so at the end of the sentence you just put percentage and then what do you want to print in this case i want to print number i know this can be confusing if this is your first time so practice this a couple more times and we'll use these print statements later on. Okay, so in summary, for loop loops through a list or a string or a range. List is easy, fair, uh, you can understand that. So for, let's say one, two, three, four, five list, my, uh, uh, you know, uh, B equals to A squared and then print it, okay? So then you can actually print uh, every element or for certain strings, print each element or do something to the each element, you can do that. Now for i in range is more common. So for i in range, there are a few ways of defining range here as you saw, do something. In this case, what we did was, if the number is divisible by, through, by two, meaning it gives a remainder of zero, go ahead and print something else print something else okay and this percentage placeholder here is uh, a like I said a placeholder inside the print statement so we can define what it is later on so this is where you can put another percentage here uh, D and you can define another number if you want if you have something else to print okay uh, hopefully it makes more sense later on so now you should know how to loop through a certain piece of code using while and for loops in the next tutorial, let's cover a different topic, but please practice these for loops and while loops. Now we are getting a bit serious into Python programming, maybe testing your comfort zone, but uh, with practice, this becomes very uh, easy, almost like second nature. So I hope you will find time to practice on this. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, let's meet again in the next tutorial.